order the regular city council meeting of July 11th, 2022. Mr. Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Bixon? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Salvio? Here. Council members Albrecht? Here. Gould? Here. Harrison? Here. Peterson? Here. Sage? Here. Thank you. Will you please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. And Brian, welcome to uh, your first city council meeting up at the up at the big table. So Thank welcome, you. and uh, we appreciate all the work you've done on the computer. All these. Thank all you. Good to be here. So yes. thank you. Um, next, we have public comment, scheduled and non-scheduled. Um, do we have any public comment? Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on for no. Go ahead. <coughs> Am I on? Yeah, is it Miss Turner? Is it Miss Turner? Uh -oh. You recognize my voice. I did, so welcome. Thank you. So go ahead. I have a question about last Thursday's meeting. Yes. Um, when you were discussing the Main Street in Romeo Road, I missed the part where are you aligning with Albertson or has that been given up? Mr. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, it's not, we haven't given up, it's not aligned, but it's offset and that's still, we have a grant for that, Ms. Turner, and that will progress with MDOT as we vet the plans, get them drawn up. We have to come up with some extra money that we'll be planning for in the next budget year. So right now it is still in the plans to do, in, in 20, at the end of 24 with them that to not align it directly, but to straighten it out a little bit. So it's not a sh coming towards, Rod towards Main Street off of Romeo, it's going to be a slight curve as opposed to straight across to Albertson. I would say that's fair. It's got a little bit of a curve, but then Albertson becomes a one way only in, not out. So that it's not a true intersection. It, it more aligns with the North Driveway of Dairy Queen, quite frankly. But it's a little bit of a cocked okay. as it comes in. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Have a good night. <coughs> oh, I have one other quick question. I know you're going to talk about it later, but I might as well get it in now besides dialing all those numbers. Um, with a water increase, do you have to have a public meeting? Um, no, I do not think we have to have a public hearing for that. But we are going to be talking about that tonight. Okay. I'll stay tuned. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Further comment? Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Honorable Body. My name is Angela Rogancy. I am a current city council member in Warren, Michigan, uh, which is uh, strange to be on the opposite side of uh, the dais this evening. I am just here to introduce myself to all of you. I'm a Democrat running for Michigan's 10th congressional seat, which includes both Rochester and Rochester Hills, as well as Macomb County. And just wanted to share a little bit about who I was. Uh, I was born and raised in uh, the district now. I have been in Warren approximately 10 years. I went to Michigan State University, uh, have a master's degree from uh, DePaul, go green. Go white. Uh, <laughs> master's degree from DePaul University. I've spent most of my career in nonprofits, started in community mental health and substance abuse treatment. I worked in affordable housing and homeless services. Uh, I worked in workforce development and career college education, also helping women transition from incarceration back into society uh, when they were finished serving their. Uh, time. Additionally, I spent about eight years as executive director of a children's charity called Playworks, which is a statewide organization focused on K through five education and ensuring that children had access to safe and uh, uh, recess and play and sports at school because uh, that is not equal and not a uh, requirement through uh, the state of Michigan. I decided to run for office a couple of years ago because I was just a bit dismayed by what was happening in the country and felt that we needed, I needed to do something. And I've never been a person who's been uh, able to sit on the sidelines 
and not figure out how to get on the field. Uh, so I decided to run for city council in Warren. If you know anything about Warren, it's an interesting place to be a first time elected official. I've learned uh, quite a bit uh, on council. And um, unfortunately, the world just seems to be a bit more tumultuous even since uh, I ran in 2018. And so I've decided that, um, and had decided months ago, that representing folks in DC is important and we need uh, new and fresh perspectives to old ideas. We need folks who stand for integrity, who have a track record of service, who are willing to uh, advocate and work across the aisle to get things done. As you all know, as locally elected officials, uh, in order to get things done, uh, we have to work across different ideologies and a broad tapestry of ideas and spectrums. And I think we need more of that in DC. And so I've been uh, going uh, across uh, the district, introducing myself, making sure people can put a face to a name, uh, would be honored to uh, be uh, the nominee in August, uh, and then ideally win in November. So thank you for your time, thank and you. it's lovely to meet you all. And um, again, an uh, interesting experience to be on the other side of the <laughs> audience. Right. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Michigan State? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kokenderf, a U of M graduate. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Come on up. Welcome. Go blue. Good evening, <laughs> Mayor Kingston <laughs> and Mayor Pro Tem Selby and members of City Council. So, I sit on a governing board where our meetings routinely start roughly 20 to 30 minutes late. And I just heard someone tell the mayor that he had 20 seconds to get up to the desk. <laughs> this reminds me why I love talking to you guys. This is, <laughs> you guys were in very, very efficient meetings. It's, it's a welcome change. Uh, I just wanted to stop by briefly, say hello. I heard that my good friend and colleague, Commissioner Smith, was stopping by to say hello to you. So I wanted to say a few words about him, not roast him, at least tonight anyways, <laughs> and just say that I have actually worked with Commissioner Spiz ever since I joined the Board of Commissioners. He's been on the board longer than me. He's been there for about 10 years now. And uh, he is somebody that uh, has deep principles, but is always willing to reach across the aisle repeatedly. He will contact, it is not, it is not uncommon for him to talk to people of other party, other ideologies, and without sacrificing those principles, to try to offer amendments to certain resolutions to find some sort of place where they can find consensus. And unfortunately, that is increasingly rare in today's politics. And it's certainly different than when I started about 10 years ago. Um, if I were to give you just a short vignette about Commissioner Spiz, amongst the communities that he represents, he represents Oxford. That's Oxford. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. Test one, two, three. Uh, represents Oxford, uh, and including when that tragedy hit Oxford High School. And I have never seen someone fight so hard for his or her constituents in that, uh, in getting them the not just the financial resources that they need at that time, but also just emotional. He knew a lot of the families. I would see him at many of the events and uh, was really there for them during that time. And it really told me all that I need to know about him being a public servant. Uh, if you have a chance to, to work with him, I think you'll really enjoy it, regardless of your political persuasion. And uh, I want to thank you for taking a few minutes of your time tonight. And uh, have a good rest of your meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hmm. Welcome. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, Mayor, uh, Council, as Adam said, my name is Mike Spiz. Um, I represent uh, the north, northeast corner of Oakland County today, which is District 3. And with the redistricting, they have changed that to now District 5, which now includes parts of Rochester and the entire city of Rochester. So I am here just to introduce, introduce myself, put a name with a face. Um, I do have a day job, so I don't do this for a living. I'm an engineer by day, I work for a tier one automotive supplier, and um, I manage roughly about 100 people globally, so I, I have to deal with many different things and to build one I, on what Adam said, so I have to deal with many different positions and ideas and how to get things done and what's the best way to get to a resolution. And being by an engineer, you know, I, I do everything based on fact, right? I, I like the data, and Adam will attest to this. I'm always asking for data. If somebody comes to me with a problem, I said, Show me the data. Let's have a discussion and look at the facts and see where we can come to a resolution on how to fix this. So um, I'm hoping to bring that here to the city of Rochester. You know, um, 
from a primary, I do not have a, a primary opponent, but in November I do have an opponent, so we'll see how that goes. If I'm lucky enough to uh, win re-election, I'll be happy to serve and reach out anytime, even before then. And Adam's still with you until the end of the year, but uh, Adam and I work well together and do to get things done if you ever need anything, whether Adam or you can call me directly. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Um, Councilmember Harrison, do you want to talk about the um, public comment section A? Sure, and I believe that our chair Rachel Williams is on with us as, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. as well. I didn't. Thank you, oh, um, Rachel. Would you like to speak? I would love to. Thank you. Um, and Welcome. Amanda can share anything else that I may have forgotten. I am sorry that I'm not able to join in person this evening. I am uh, up north for a pre-planned trip. However, um, I wanted to invite, uh, formally invite council to join us at the, uh, now an annual event, the dog wash on July 23rd from 9 to 11 a.m. Last year, it was a great success. We raised $600 in funds. Those funds went directly toward our initiatives for the year, including that beautiful new mural in the park. Um, and similarly this year, uh, the funds will go directly toward our initiatives, including uh, supplementing plantings at the Mount Avon Cemetery and the um, Hank Creek Bridge Garden, among other things. Um, we would love for council to join. We would love for uh, Mayor Vixen and Mayor Pro Tem Salvia to join. Uh, we would just love to see you all there. You can wear your shirts from last year. Um, but we would really appreciate any and all support. Very good. You got it. No, no new T-shirts this year? <laughs> No new T-shirts. Okay. We thought, you know, we would we would save the funds to go toward our initiatives uh, instead. Very good, Councilmember Albert. I can be there this year now that I have a new knee. Uh, but uh, but uh, are you going to start? I, I know you do always do a great job of marketing. I haven't seen a lot on it, is and it's a few weeks out. So are you? What can we do to help yes. you market it? Thank you. Um, we have an event on Facebook. Um, we're attempting to reach out to uh, local reporters, including Mary Beth Almond. Um, I'm going to boost the event on Facebook as well. Uh, Chief Shettenholm said that he may be able to share it on their social media. If you all individually could share it out, um, invite your friends that have a furry friend. Um, we'd love to see them all there. But thank you. That's a very good point. Very good. Hopefully okay. everyone can make it. I'm excited I'm to be there. Yeah. We're in. We're all in, I think. Yes. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. Okay. We'll love to see you guys there. So we'll look forward to seeing you on the 23rd. 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 Very good. We'll see everybody there. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, next is approval. Is, is there any further? No. Uh, next, we have approval of the minutes. The consideration of the minutes of the regular meeting of June 27th, so moved. 2022. Motion by Councilmember Peterson. Support. Support by Councilmember Sage. Discussion. Madam Clerk, to roll, please. Madam, uh, Mr. <laughs> Clerk, please. Thank you. I knew I would do that. <laughs> Mayor Bixon. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Yes. Council members Albrecht. Yes. Gould. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Peterson. Yes. And Sage. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Next is the approval of the consent agenda. First is the consideration of a special event application from the City Beautiful Commission to hold a dog and butterfly dog wash on Saturday, July 23rd from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at City Hall right by the police station tennis courts over there. And then review of the current special event calendar. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda motion as presented. Motion by Council Member Harrison. Support. Support, Support by Council Member Peterson. Mr. Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Bixon? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia? Yes. Council members Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. And Sage? Yes. Thank you. There's no old business or table items. There's no public hearing, legislative deliberation. There is a legislative deliberation. Is a consideration of the 2022 water and sewer rate proposal. Uh, Marcy, do you want to come up and... Thank you. Oh, 
always the grim news of the water rate increases. So, thank you. Um, so what we're proposing is a 1.76% increase on the water and a 3.73% increase on the city sewer charges. I think Marcy might need to use the... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Do you want me to repeat? Are we... Yes. Okay. So we're proposing a 1.76% increase on the water rates and a 3.73% increase on the city sewer charges. So that would be, we're proposing an effectivity date of 9-1 of this year. So on this table, we like to show our history. So this far column to the right is the proposed rates. And we have it broken down because we have the two water systems in the city, the well and the uh, Gleewell water. And then the bottom rows represent the sewer, which is the same for both, uh, both types of users. So you can see that in 2019 and 2020, there was no change at all in the sewer rates proposed for the city well and Gliwa, and no change in the sewer for uh, 2019 through a three-year hold through 2021. So this year we're proposing the pass-through increase that I mentioned before of the 1.76 on the water and the 3.73% increase on the sewer charges. So how does this impact our customers? So if you are a well user or a well, um, you get your water from the, the Rochester well, and you're, let's just pick a, a medium user, a 20 unit on average user, the impact that we're proposing annualized would be less than $23 per year. If you're on the Gliwa side and you're that medium unit user, then your impact would be less than $29 per year at the rates that we're proposing. Um, I don't know if there's any questions that I might be able to answer for. Council Member Albright. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the information in the packet. And I know we talked about this at the Thursday uh, special meeting, but uh, t tonight we vote on it. I just wanted to restate a couple things that I brought up on Thursday that I know I mentioned, I spoke to the Finance Director Maggio about which is um, we, we've done a good job of educating, um, you know, our residents. I, I look at this, yeah, where your taxes go and all that information, which I carry around with me, um, not all the time, but <laughs> <laughs> I love this job, but not that much. <laughs> um, but uh, we do a good job of being very transparent. We have a great website. We put a lot of information out there, but not everybody knows to go to what part of the website and everything else like that. I think all of us to, the, to a person up here have heard about water rates for the last, for, 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 for years on end, and I uh, appreciate the fact that we held them steady for three years on the sewer rates and two years on the water rates until last year for the water and this year for the sewer. That being said, there's a couple things. One, I'd like, uh, as we uh, uh, promulgate this information, to put together a brochure explaining the whole Gliwa impact for those of us on the east side um, you know, we are paying a, a surcharge on top of what uh, Gliwa charges Sterling Heights, which is where we get our, our water from. So I think the Shelby. Sterling Heights, what I Shelby. Shelby. Shelby, okay. Sterling Heights shall be there. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, yeah. um, that uh, that uh, I, I want the residents to really understand what that is because we're not we're not making money on this we're really it's it's a pass through cost that we have to unfortunately pass through to our residents including myself li li living on that side so if we could do that um, through all the you know on the website uh, with our local newspapers and then in, an insert into the water bill uh, you know that goes out prior to the rate increase that would be great the second thing i brought up was um, and again, uh, we, many of us are watching our lawns, you know, die and we're putting water on there and I, you know, can't wait for that August bill to come. But uh, that being said, uh, if we could also resurrect the irrigation meter program uh, that was done several years ago where people could 
um, and maybe city manager can refresh my memory, but have a sort of a bypass that measures the water that's going, being used for irrigation, which will, over time will lower your 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 your, your bill. And I know uh, the uh, city can run an analysis for any homeowner that does that. So those would be my two asks for uh, administration to put together so that people know why this is happening. What, what they can do about it in terms of reducing some of their irrigation water and uh, and be prepared for the increases, even though, as you suggested here, they're, uh, you know, over a, an annual rate, they're nominal, but with everything else going up, it's just another, another, another expense we have. Thank you. Council Member Harrison. Thank you. I, I agree with Council Member Albrecht. This is going to be a real burden for our residents. It's frustrating to see our water rates as well as everything else continue to rise. So I think that educational component is going to be really important. And I too would love for it to include ways that we can all conserve water. So watering our lawns in the off hours um, or really early morning hours, turning off the faucet when you're brushing your teeth, all those little things that can really add up to make a difference. I think it's a helpful reminder to include because we want to be really transparent with this increase and make sure that it's communicated because no one should have a surprise um, in the mail. Councilmember Peterson. Oh. Mayor Pro Temp, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Thank you for the information. Um, uh, in terms of this information, I just want to kind of go back a little bit to the rate study that we did. We did a rate study, and I think that was really important for the residents to know that we went out and we did that rate study, and we verified that, you know, our goal was to have the cost of water to be the cost that it cost us to provide it, nothing else, as well as to plan for the future. And I think the other goal that we all uh, kind of collectively agreed to is we wanted smooth rates. We didn't want to have any sharp increases and to really plan ahead. So um, I think that still continues to be goal. I support these rate changes. Um, to me, they are really just very modest um, inflationary rates, or, but even probably less. Actually, they are less in current inflation rates. Um, and then I did get some additional information. And um, Finance Director, I don't know if we can share this on the screen, but you did provide the information kind of comparing our rates fully loaded to our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we all feel the sticker shock a little bit, especially on the east side when we get our summer water bill. And so the finance department had put together some information that really compares apples to apples on a quarterly basis for a combined average bill of both water and sewer all in. And again, just as a comparison while they're pulling this up, Rochester east side rates relative to Rochester Hills east side or Gliwa rates are a little less than 6.6% uh, less. So our Gliwa rates are less than Rochester Hills all in. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> Um, you could show that one. I just looked at the combined combined bill quarterly. So scroll right. Is it on this tab here? Yep. Okay. So comparing Rochester at the 357.65. So that's the bottom highlighted yellow, right right hand under the quarterly bill. Okay. <laughs> compared to the Rochester Hills, which you can't tell on, there, you're gonna hide it, there we go. There you go. Rochester Hills at 381. So 381 versus 357. And then for our city residents or city uh, water consumers, 232. So they, they certainly uh, have a lower rate, but I thought it was relevant to compare Gliwa to Gliwa. Um, you know, obviously, um, Shelby is slightly less than ours. Um, and I think Councilmember Albrecht's comments are appropriate that um, 
residents, it's hard to understand the GLIWA rates. I had a conversation with a woman who works for GLIWA in finance for over 20 years, and she basically said it's a black box how they calculate the rates. And every year she learns something new, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, what's changing in the formula, how it's calculated. And so I think, you know, at a high level, residents may think, hey, we pay 20% premium to Shelby for our water. Can't you just make that 20% premium go away? Well, if we did a direct connect in, our rates might go up because of the cost of uh, capital that we would have to put in to do that. So again, I think there has to be ongoing discussion and study regarding water, water rates, our capital plans. Um, I support this rate change. Um, and then the one question I had is normally we have a resident on our committee. So have we reached out to Roy Konizny to get his thoughts or at least let him know uh, what we're talking about? We haven't reached out personally. We did try to set up that infrastructure committee meeting, and we weren't successful at getting that set up before the uh, the previous meeting that we had on Thursday. But I believe that there's enough information with rates and with um, our our future projects that we're definitely we're not going to abandon the infrastructure committee. Is what I want to to pass on. It's just a little bit of a difficult time to get everyone together. So. That's why we didn't get his feedback, but I can reach out to him. I think he's a lovely gentleman, so I'll be glad to, to reach out to him personally and get some feedback for, for the council. Good. Council Member Peterson. Yes, thank you. Um, again, thanks for this great information. Um, you know, many years ago, I came from a water department before here in another state, and we had water conservation was one of the big things. I don't know why we don't start something here with that, not just along the irrigation, but having certain days in that, because based on that um, report that was done before, they also stated that we have the highest water usage than any of the surrounding communities. So, you know, and that was alarming then, right? So um, those two things. Plus, back on the page where you show the low, medium, and high, mm -hmm. how did you come up with those um, that usage amount on the side because I've been here almost 40 years now about 38 mm -hmm. and I have the same water usage almost every month okay so only thing that changes usage doesn't just cost us so I just wondered how you came up with that because it says that 40 is high and there's a big delta of, si of 60 you know you in usage there um, we we randomly picked these numbers to set as the low, the medium, and high. And then we just wanted it to be consistent between the well and the GLIWA side for comparison purposes. Um, there are, there are going to be anomalies to this, most right. definitely. So you, you may have... Um, you know, you may have low months when your kids are away in college and then your kids come home and then suddenly you're in the very high range. So there's going to be like a little bit of a, an averaging out of this. But we just, we, we randomly picked these and we uh, did kind of a, maybe you can share a little bit of how we gathered this, but we picked um, some swaths of information from the BSNA and, and pulled this together and, and um, put them together in these four in these four levels well I just think for transparency purposes I do feel that it should be like 20 should be low 40 should be medium 60 to 70 should be high I think because that I, I just know that I don't do all those extra things at the house so I just I, I just think that it would be more transparent to show because I don't think I don't think there's very many people that get 40 unless they're the seniors and that they're at 40 and below um, I would I would say that anywhere uh, you know tw up to 20 would be the low, okay. and then you know 20 or below, and then 40 for medium, mm -hmm. and then at least 60 or plus for um, high, okay. because then you're only a 30 delta in between that and the very high, and then you can tell like a, I think just overall if we really were to analyze the bills we'd see where we were at, okay. because now I know I know now by looking at that that. Um, the, the numbers are even larger, you know, for what someone, and I know it is annualized, but just, it's always been my thing about the bill showing that, that difference of what someone's going to truly pay. Yeah. Council Member Albert. I just wanted to um, add on to my thoughts after hearing from 
Council members Peterson and Harrison and Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Yeah. The, the conservation, I, I remember bringing this up a few years ago also. I, you know, when you go into Rochester Hills, they have the boards up, you know, they, every other day watering or water before 4 o'clock or what have you and all those kinds of things. So in those educational materials that I, I requested administration put together, could we d devote a section to con con water conservation, perhaps put it in our next newsletter, Nick? Um, so that we uh, we became we become a, a a city known for conserving water also, and with that being said, I would like to make a motion to approve the resolution to change the water and sewer rates effective September first, twenty twenty two, as presented. Motion by Councilmember. Hold on one second. I'll support the motion. Motion by Councilmember Albrecht. Support by Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Uh, Ms. Turner, did you want to say something? Yes. I have a question before you pass this. Okay. The um, sewer infrastructure and water infrastructure usage, what is in that pile and where is it and how much since you've been charging it do we have and it, does it all go to the general fund and does not go to the water and sewer improvement? Um, Mr. Anthony, do you want to answer that? Oh, absolutely. Um, the water and sewer fund, our enterprise funds, there has not ever been a transfer out of water and sewer to general. That money stays in the water and sewer fund, uh, and then those funds are used to then do the future projects and or if the projects are large, like when we're doing the the DWS or after the state revolving fund programs, those infrastructure charges are then paying for those bond payments, the principals and interest. But it stays in the water and sewer funds. All right, so we're not using that money for any other purposes. No, 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 no. That's that's. Could you please regular. provide the public with that? Uh, what the fund is and and what it's been used for. Uh, uh, Mayor, if I can, uh, are you looking for like a like what projects we've done in the last so many years? I'd like to see how much is in there and how much we've used and for what it's been used for. Gotcha. Um, we'll have the uh, that's in every quarterly report. Our next one will be at the next meeting in July. A water and sewer is part of it. Um, I will make sure to get, um, I know we have a list of all the projects we've done for water and sewer. I'll make sure to get that list. Um, I m we may even have some maps that, that uh, color code the streets of which one we've done. I, I can make sure to, to add that into that agenda item, if that would be helpful. Okay, and the, the other thing I wanna ask is, a couple months ago, back when we had our old city manager, why they were doing the DeQuinder Avon 23 mile road thing. They talked about hooking up directly to Great Lakes and bypassing Shelby. Has anything come of that? Is it just been blown out of the water? Is it not? Mr. Maggio, you can take that one, Mayor, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is, uh, we've run a few um, analysis on it. And the issue really comes down to the mysteriousness a little bit that Council uh, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia alluded to earlier on how Gliwa uses the rates to calculate what they would charge us. Uh, for example, they wanted to use the 2012 usages amounts for the city um, to, to come up with the rates. And what that would mean is um, from what we're paying currently, even though it's a 20% markup to Shelby, it would be an over 30% increase to rates just to switch over. Um, that has to do with- A one time or? No, every, the, the unit, per unit charge is that much higher. The reason Shelby's is lower is there's a bit of the bulk um, purchase into that, but it's also the average in distance to the water plants and they have five different connection points. So their rates are lower inherently. We only have one connection point to Gliwa. So our meter pit, based on the distance and elevation, actually charges us more than Shelby, Shelby's averaged lower rates. Um, so we also, there's, there's a second thing that hasn't kicked in yet. Um, if you've 
uh, may have heard last year either at council or in the news that we had um, uh, Shelby had multiple days of going over the allotted amount that glue will let you use so with that they had to build and have completed uh, I believe as three million gallons of storage to mitigate the usages on the peaks and, and um, really just the peak hour demands daily won't wouldn't change what that will trickle down to us is since we pay in a mark up to Shelby as soon as the average because um, what they do is they average three years they're gonna see the lower usage from Shelby on the peak time and that's gonna drive Shelby's rates down so there will be a bit of a delay for the Gleewer rates, but there should be a significant decrease. Um, I, I won't speculate the amounts because we just had the one year's worth of data, but it would be lower than what the current amount is to Shelby. So since we don't have storage tanks, for us to get off of the system now, not only would it have been a 30% increase from uh, Shelby's current rates, but with Shelby rates about to potentially go down if it continues, it would be even a larger spread. So it it, it just does not make uh, any financial sense for the direct hookup. Um, really, any way we sliced it, we tried storage tanks, different sizes, doing them ourselves. How can we drive the rates down? And it just it doesn't work out in in the uh, Gliwa calculation, and they won't. Budge. Uh, Gliwa would not take into account um, any other numbers, um, so it, it just it didn't pan out. Okay. okay. Now, when Shelby's rates go down, will that be reflected in our rates? Uh, Mayor, if I can, uh, it would because our contract with them is 20% above what Gliwa charges Shelby. So as soon as Gliwa would adjust the rates or Shelby would get a decrease in the rates, it's a 20% markup. We don't pay anything else to Shelby. So the rate goes down, our amount would go down. And we have, and in, the, and we have in the past be reflected our on our bills. If you're in the Gliwak district, yes, so you're not. Well, I'm in the sewer for Gliwak. On the well Correct. side last year, there was actually a, a, a decrease in the rates. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's, I think that's important to note. That's, that's the transparency that I think everyone is looking for. And you'd be correct, too, on the sewer. The same thing would follow sewer, though the calculation, that doesn't have to do with Shelby. That's going to do with Oakland County. And that's through the Water Resource Commission's office. But um, I don't know if you're watching on the screen or not, but that's why we have not had any rate changes in three years. Is It's, it's been very well, um, I would say, managed and make sure not to pass on anything that didn't need to get passed on. And we have not had a sewer rate increase. But you're putting one in tonight. Correct. Correct. Last one was um, 20 Two years ago. Uh, 18 was the last rate change to 328. No change for 19, 20, or 21, uh, and then the increase for 22. And you're telling me that comes through Oakland County? That is correct. Yeah, we're part of the Oakland County Collective for the uh, sewer. So that's through Oakland County. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything, anything further? Councilmember Peterson. Nope. Looking, oh, uh, looking further out, do you see, uh, how do we look for next year? The seasons um, obviously drive <laughs> the okay. water usage and the sales. Um, so when we're using the three-year averages, we're staying very steady. Okay. Um, even in the Raftelis model, um, when we look out, at the end of the of 25 our fund balance level is projected to essentially not change so the money that's coming in even with the increases is going right back out in projects and everything else so we're, we're always watching that the end of the multi-year period we know we're having a uh, drier season this year the bills so far from Shelby have been 50 percent higher in usage um, from last year so we know it's a dry season so when you have the, the lulls and the highs and the lows and all that as we go along, they average themselves out over the long term. 
Uh, but in the short term, then we could, if it continues, expect more revenue into the fund through the summer this year, which would then offset projects in the future years. Without having to do an increase then? Very flat. So one of the things out of the study was to keep the rates um, uh, no big jumps, as Count, uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, stated earlier. That was one of the big things. Keep them smooth, small, and manageable. That was that was the key parts to it. So the small increases along the way should keep us, and, and we're still right on track to the model too. We're not off. That's awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? I just I just like to say, as I said Thursday night. We've been having this discussion for as long as I've been on council, which has been a long time. Every time we come up with an idea on how to fix it, it's, it doesn't work out. It's, it's the same situation as it's Detroit water. Now it's GLEWAC. They call the shots. It's a monopoly. Yeah. They give us what they give us. And unfortunately, we, we have to take it because we're on their system. If they're mismanaged, as they've been in the past, we bear the brunt of that so i think we've done a good job of keeping it as low as we can um but that's just a fact of, of life right now um so we will continue to work to keep it down the rates down you know all the things councilmember albrecht said about conservation stuff are good but these things are just facts of life as much as we don't like it and um that's really where we are so mr clerk the roll please Mayor Bixon? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia? Yes. Council Members Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. And Sage? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> you guys up there. Uh, next, well, while you're up here, reports of the regular business as receipt of the check register reports. If I'm, City Manager, yes, do you want? There's two reports this evening uh, for 6.30 and for 7.5 in your packets. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Next, we see a report from the various boards and commission. First, there's a report from the Older Persons Center, the Older Persons Commission, OPC, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Yes, absolutely. OPC board met July 7th. Uh, coming to Rochester City Council August 8th will be the, the budget. So the budget was approved at that July 7th meeting. Um, I'll speak to a couple highlights of it, but you'll be seeing the details in that packet. Um, in general, it is a um, uh, it is a, a budget for 2023 through 2025, where revenues are exceeding expenditures by 400,000, uh, kind of on average for the next three years. Um, it does maintain the minimum 25%. Um, fund balance, it's a, they actually have a much higher fund balance than that, but that is their target to maintain at least 25%. Um, they are spending in this budget $346,000 capital for capital improvements. Um, that really is the focus of the budget, um, is really focused on those capital improvements for the next few years. Um, one other thing I wanted to note was we discussed inflation rates in the budget, and they're using some very conservative inflation rates. In some cases, depending upon the category, 10 to 12 percent. So not just the 2 to 3, not just the current 8.6 rate of inflation, so as high as 10 to 12. So trying to keep that budget very conservative. So council will see that August 8th. Um, in terms of the, the OPC Center, um, things are going great. They just had the wonderful summer soiree. I saw many uh, council members and mayor was there. Uh, they did raise $54,000 for Meals on Wheels. Um, they did ask that I announce the upcoming event called Top Chef. It's August 11th from 5 to 7. Um, it's $15 a person. They haven't done it in a few years, but it was a great event in the past and encourage everyone to come out and enjoy that event. Um, last thing is that um, there will be a special uh, board meeting on July 19th for the OPC, and that will be discussing the, uh, uh, the efforts of the rebranding committee. So more to come on that. Any questions? Okay, next we have a report from the Planning Commission, Council Member Sage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first thing we reviewed was the site plan at uh, FAR a pharmaceutical for an interior renovation and second story addition to building there on the on the main campus. 
the public hearing is set for August 1st with regard to that project. Um, we did our first review of and consideration of all the zoning district changes that were incorporated into the master plan, and then there'll be subsequent uh, further discussions uh, that obviously will also have to be uh, addressed here as well. Uh, and finally, the I think we're trying to set some timing, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, City Manager, September for the joint um, meeting between Planning Commission and Council correct. to review the zoning and planning process. Mm -hmm. any, any questions? Any questions? I think just one thing we, the, the July meeting got pushed because of the 4th of July weekend. It's going to be Thursday the 21st. Correct. So we have not had the normal uh, July meeting. It got pushed to the 21st. Next is a report from the uh, from RARA, Council Member Albright. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This was a special board meeting called um, just before the 4th of July holiday on June 30th. There was really just one item on the uh, uh, agenda, which was to approve um, uh, an agreement, a, a resolution, so that we can sign uh, for the sale of the 480 building on 2nd Street. Um, so uh, that was presented and, and passed. I don't know if it, what, what's pub, what I can announce publicly yet in terms of the purchase agreement, but uh, it was a, a very good, uh, good price, and um, uh, we like the, the, the buyer. And um, there is some equipment that the buyer is not going to use that we are uh, going to put up for auction, but we know that the OPC has expressed some interest in it. Their workout room. So, uh, if they make the right bid, they will, they will, they, they will get that. But, but more to come. But uh, all good news on that. Very Thank good. you. Any questions, comments? Okay. Next, uh, on to general miscellaneous, uh, Mr. City Manager. Yeah, I would just have one thing. Uh, Jenna at the DDA sent over their um, wild week this week at the DDA. So they have sidewalk sidewalk sales start Thursday, Friday, dancing in the streets Saturday, movies in the moonlight Saturday night, um, farmers market obviously during the day set Saturday. So the ladies are working many many hours. I think dancing in the street is Friday night. Is it Friday night? Okay. Um, uh, I think you're right. Thank you. Because that's the day I'm supposed to go down there for dancing. In the that street. would be <laughs> that would be good. If I you could were be correct, wrong, so. right? I mean, you could be dancing right. alone, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not, yeah, the, you're right. not the yeah. Yeah. first time that. Probably. Yeah, that's Friday and Saturday's mo movies in the moonlight. So Friday, Saturday. Sorry about that. Dancing yeah. in the street is from six to ten. There you go. Friday night on back on. It's still going to be on Fourth Street. Correct. Where it was. And we have Fourth Street complete now, so they're ready to go. That's it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clerk, anything tonight? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll just say that we're about three weeks out from the August primary, so if anyone needs an absentee ballot, they can come to the front counter and see Leanne or myself. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, Council Member Gould? Uh, just one thing. Thank you. Uh, I will not be able to attend the dog wash, unfortunately, oh. two years running. I'll be out of town, but uh, my thoughts will be with you. There you go. Thoughts and prayers with us, right? <laughs> right with us. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Thank you. Um, I just would like to ask for an excused absence for the June 27th meeting. Like all of us, we all try to schedule our vacations around City Council, but this trip got rescheduled out of my control due to a COVID reschedule, but um, I would appreciate an excused absence. Motion to accept uh, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia's uh, oh. excused absence. Motion by Councilmember Albrecht. Support. Support by Council Member Sage. Mr. Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Bixon? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia? Yes. Council Members Albrecht? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Sage? Yes. Peterson? Yep. And Gould? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Just one other thing. I just wanted to thank administration for putting this Ready Rochester flyer in the tax bills. And I think most of us on council got the alert tonight for the weather. So for residents, text Ready Rochester to 38276 if you want to be in the know on what hap what's happening in Rochester. That is all. Very good. Council Member Sage. Uh, nothing this evening, sir. Council Member Albrecht. Nothing, Mayor. I'm going to skip Councilmember Harrison. Go to Councilmember Peterson. Nothing. 
Councilmember Harrison, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. I um, would. Um, I regret to inform you that I will be resigning from the City Council. Uh, my last meeting will be on July 25th. I've accepted a new full-time position for the City of Wheat Ridge as their communications manager. Awesome. Which is, thank you, um, just outside of Denver, Colorado. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I will be, I will be um, moving. And honestly, it has been such an honor to serve with all of you mm -hmm. on the City Council. I think that we have worked so well together. I've made such wonderful friendships. And I think that as a team, we've accomplished a lot. We have seen two budgets pass unanimously under this council. We oversaw the building of our new DPW. I've gotten to see two murals go up in the city, and I feel really proud of my time here in the city. And I know that I'm leaving you in very good and capable hands, so I'm going to miss everybody so much. That's actually sad. And, and then your last meeting is? July 25th. So then I think we can all say something at that meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Anything else? Uh, That's enough, right? Pretty <laughs> That's enough, right? <laughs> May I know her excused absence. I'll make a motion to please for her excused absence for last meeting. I was uh, ill the last meeting and was not able to. Motion by Councilmember Peterson. Support. Support by Councilmember Albrecht. Mr. Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Bixon. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Yes. Council members Albrecht. Yes. Gould. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Sage. Yes. Thank you. Um, so. We now have an opening for our city council. Um, we've gone through that process before, but I think this time there's going to be a year and three months. Um, so I'm assuming that we will be filling this. So the process will be that you need to send the clerk, Mr. Clerk or Madam Clerk, in the next two weeks, a letter saying that you're interested in running just like we did last time. So we put out you know, on social media, on our website, everybody who's watching, everybody on council, let people know that you have two weeks to send in your application or not even an application, just that you're interested in running. Then we will send those names uh, to all of us on the city council. Then we'll have two weeks to do whatever council people choose to do. Those two weeks, talk to people, whatever they want. And then we're looking at making some kind of decision on the first meeting in August. Um, I'd like to ask the clerk to send out a le uh, email to all the people who applied last time, excluding Councilmember Gould, <laughs> because Councilmember Gould is now Councilmember Gould, so he does not need that uh, email since he was uh, elected in the last election. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Mayor, if you could just clarify the date. What is the date that they need to send in that? that so letter? by by Monday, July 25th is our next meeting. So applications need to be, and again, not an application, just a letter saying an intent uh, to be considered for this position. Um, and then what's the meeting date? August 8th. Yeah. August 8th is the meeting that we will invite people if they choose to, they can come and say a few words about themselves, and then we will deliberate as a board to appoint a new city council person uh, to replace council member Harrison. Will we be voting that day? Um, we will be deliberating that day. There's an intention that we will vote that day, but that's what we will decide um, that day. We can decide to do whatever we want to do. Um, that day we will be deliberating and probably voting on a new replacement. Um, so again, any questions, reach out to the city manager, his staff, to the city clerk. Um, but those are the, that's the procedure. Um, I'm moving forward with that. And um, hopefully we will be able to fill that position um, soon and get the board back up to the full seven member panel as quickly as possible. Any further questions on that? Meeting adjourned. Thank you everybody for coming.